Logan stood upon the precipice, the wind blowing through his hair. And as Perry slowly and deliberately stepped off the cliff, he suddenly remembered he had forgotten to wear his jetpack! Oh my god, poor Perry Logan forgot! Not only doesn't he have his jetpack, there's no such thing as a jetpack. At least most Americans don't have such niceties. Perhaps the one percenters are all flying around on jetpacks. So, if you see someone flying around on a jetpack, it's probably a banker. Perry thought we were promised jetpacks, but more importantly, we were promised that the money would trickle down. <laughs> oh, and the only thing that trickled down were our wages. And as always happens in history, capitalism, once it gets the upper hand in a country, robs the citizens of all their money, thereby destroying capitalism itself. Hey, what kind of a world is it when a guy has to use special effects to uh, uh, create the appearance of having a jetpack? It's December 15th, 2011, and of course the absence of those promised jetpacks are the least of our problems. Perry? This is not Perry, but one of his clever imitators. I say that. Clever imitators of Perry Logan, of whom there are legion. <laughs> what could they be thinking? Hey, stop laughing. We were promised jetpacks. And you're laughing. Our government is passing fascist laws and you're laughing? Well, I'll have none of it. <laughs> okay, not only were we promised jetpacks. This is a joke. Okay, the title is a joke. That uh, if, you, uh, if you're in my league as far as your age, you know, unless you're very young, you know that the old uh, predictions of the 21st century, people love to... You know, they would do shows, they would make up stuff about the 21st century and speculate on it all through the 20th century. And, of course, there were going to be jetpacks. <laughs> I don't really think any presidential candidate other than myself. Haven't I mentioned that if you vote for me, there will be jetpacks? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you write in Perry Logan for president, there will be jetpacks. Oh, not if you just write me in, but if you, like if I win, okay. Anyway, <laughs> oh, on this happy note, we begin a, a, a century that has gotten off to such a lame start that you certainly don't need me to tell you. <laughs> And I don't know why you keep laughing. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we laugh through our tears because the 21st century has w where to begin. Yeah. It's possible. Hey, I ain't no political philosopher. <laughs> I ain't no political philosopher, not really. But it seems to me that the 21st century has started off with the two worst presidents ever. 
Could that be true? Hey, look, write it up and uh, send it to me in an email, okay? Get on the web, write it up, and uh, see if you don't think that, well, George W. Bush was, of course, <laughs> the worst president ever. Oh, but you know, he's off on a technicality. He was never really president. Hey, read up on Republican vote. Fraud and, you know, I mean, stop obsessing about Republican sex scandals. Yay! It seems to me that when you think about Republicans, you start thinking about really weird sex scandals. Yay! Whose fault is that? I don't know whose fault it is, but in addition to the sex scandals, are the perhaps rather more, perhaps more significant electoral scandals. <laughs> Does the phrase black box voting mean anything to you? Hello? 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 What? 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 what, what? Everybody, everybody just disappeared, just disappeared, disappeared from the auditorium. It's as if I'm talking, talking, to, talking to myself. To myself, to myself, to myself, to myself. Echo, 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 echo. They promised us a jetpack. Get back, get back, get back. They promised us a jetpack, a jetpack, a jetpack. troubled earth from his jetpack. Perry thought, a whole generation is bitter. A whole generation was denied a livelihood, a chance to better themselves. I'm talking about the young people of today, the good people who are the Wall Street occupiers, or the 99% movement, which I love. And if I could, I would give jetpacks all of them. But it's just me. As I look on the passing landscape below from the vantage of my jetpack, Perry thought, on the other hand, many good things have come from the early catastrophes of the 21st century. There are worker and middle class movements all over the globe. Even the Russians are in on the act. It all goes back to the Egyptians, you know. They started this whole thing. It's a stark case of governments everywhere having succumbed to the immense power of the corporations as previsioned by Thomas Jefferson. That's our whole situation in a nutshell, where uh, being able to fly and stuff is possibly the least of our problems. You see, uh, the corporations got the upper hand in just the biggest way, and it looks like it's global. But to look at the silver lining, uh, people are not taking it lying down. Even Americans who are reluctant to hit the streets have like hit the streets in record numbers. The government is so scared. Our kind of repressive government is so scared they just passed a bill that kind of like gives them back the right to take us off and torture us. I think they may have changed some of the provisions, but Obama just recently caved. Yay! By the way, uh, in a, a cave report, a cave alert, Obama caved. You know, but uh, as I say, as I like to say, look, people, Obama doesn't want to bother with detaining us. There's a Senate, there's like a, a, a law they're trying to pass that will make it possible to detain us in pure Nazi fashion. It would have the army going after possibly citizens. The U.S. Army going after us if we get out of line. Well, supposedly if we're thought to be terrorists. Once again, suspicion is all these people need, which strikes me as fascism. 
But before all that happened, you see, Obama had said, he, he did, he said he had the right to simply kill people on suspicion. Once again, this linchpin where suspicion is all you need. As I like to say, Barack Obama's foreign policy is one, accuse someone of being a terrorist, and two, kill him. <laughs> So, this is the guy that people were relying on to veto this bill. He even threatened to veto it, and then he caved. He caved like this. Oh, do the cave, Obama, do the cave. Yes, Obama caved. But you see, he was never, I mean, he is, he's beyond detaining people on suspicion. You know, just like, throw out the Constitution, throw out everything back to the Magna Carta, you see? And that's why I say the uh, jetpacks. Forget about my jetpack. That's different. I'm from the future. That's my story. But basically, we didn't get any of the jetpacks that were promised us in the 70s and 80s with the Republican Revolution. And in fact, of course, now that it's like the stats are in, I don't even think the Heritage Foundation can snow us. In case you want to know, the Heritage Foundation and outfits like that are just hard to snow us, you know. <laughs> and they do, and they did. So, we are on the streets now, and uh, don't even have microphones, <laughs> much less jetpacks. But uh, folks are on the streets now, bless their hearts, because it has just gone so south in the last three years. Hmm. Last three years. How does that ring a bell? in jetpack, okay? It's pretty common where I come from. I wanted to tell you a, a good way to feel better and help this whole situation out at the same time. And it's something, I, I mention it because it's one of my favorite themes and also because uh, people, especially leftists, are just impossibly messed up right now. They're just... Uh, most people are, are pretty messed up by now, don't you think? You know, we are messed up by this situation. It's a lot more serious than not having some toy we were promised. It has to do with, like, the whole thing just was the reverse of what was promised. The whole, we're talking about, uh, I guess you'd say, the dismantling of the, uh, of the New Deal, which, hmm, to give credit where it's due, has been pretty successful. <laughs> It's been pretty successful in the sense that I think uh, about half of all Americans are now said to be living in poverty. Yeah, you know, everyone's messed up, you know, so I'm here to, to help. We're, we're partly, we laugh through our tears, that's part of the idea, and partly there's a few things you can do, and one is very simple. You heard it from me before. Vote for the progressive third party of your choice. <laughs> Don't worry, I got a hold of you, baby. Hey, you've heard it from me before, and now you're hearing it again. Vote for the progressive third party of your choice, or I'll drop you. Just kidding. But the thing that uh, people don't people don't believe that this will make you feel better. But I promise you, as one who has voted. Democratic, and who has also voted third party. Hey, vote third party. You'll feel better. <laughs> Guys. Yes. It's like kind of orgasmic voting third party. <laughs> uh, 
progressives, uh, there's a serious thing here. Progressives are just the most discouraging damn people in the world when it comes to third parties. But they just always say the same things. And progressives, if you want to have a bummer interchange with progressives, just mention third parties. Now, here I am, a progressive who thinks third parties are just, as far as the electoral process, the only way to go. The other way to go is the street. And Occupy Wall Street is handling that for us. Yay! Well, help them. Join them. Help them. Over in the electoral field, in case you're interested, I'm just telling you that there is this kind of like fine feeling. Yeah. Kind of a fine, fine, super fine feeling. <laughs> it comes from voting third party. And, uh, you know, ha ha. Absolutely true, though. Absolutely true. Come on, look at it this way. Right now, to vote Democratic is to be filled with regret. Right? Back to right! Back to right! Admit it. To vote Democratic is, in almost all cases now, to be filled with angst, <gasps> regret, <gasps> problems with cognitive dissonance and simple, flat-out, plain disbelief, <gasps> problems of massive disappointment, <gasps> feelings of betrayal, pustules coming out on your face, Snot, mucus, vomit, crap! I'm sorry, I had a Moment. Okay, uh, making light of a, a very battered population, very battered middle class, if any of us can call ourselves middle class. The point being that the 1% have got all the jetpacks, and we gotta get them back. <laughs> It may not be orgasmic, but you will feel good. I brag all the time. Okay. I'm a white guy. I brag all the time about how I voted for Cynthia McKinney. Mr. Logan is strutting around like a cock of the walk because he voted for Cynthia McKinney. I don't need no debt pack. I voted for Cynthia McKinney. <laughs> okay, but vote third party. Vote progressive third party. There is like a at least one such party going on, a new party. I think it's called the Justice Party. I have no connection with it, but there is such a party. Vote for them. Or the third party of your choice. And you will just feel so good. <laughs> I, that's why I brag about uh, having voted for Cynthia McKinney, whom I love. Yay! I brag about it because she, she was, her program was a real progressive program, you see. Obama was promising things like expanding the war in Afghanistan. Now, who the hell votes for a Democrat who promises to expand the war in Afghanistan or anywhere else? Who? And in case you hadn't noticed, Obama has expanded almost all the wars everywhere. I know he got us out of Iraq, but that's because Iraq told us to leave. Don't you get it? It's true. Iraq told us to leave. And then Obama, pragma pragmatician that he is, uh, took the credit for our leaving Iraq, which we're not really doing. It's just too weird. I'm out of here. <sighs> Eat your heart out, Steven Spielberg. But uh, it will help to protest and stuff like that, and I think it will make you feel better. If you're anything like me, it will make you feel really cool. Hey, you want to feel cool like me? America, you want to feel cool like me? Maybe not? No? If you want to feel better, uh, do this. Uh, make a wise choice of third parties. This, of course, they are unlikely to win, but they pull the parties, the big guys, <laughs> in different directions. I cite the Tea Party as proof. My fellow lefties are in denial of the Tea Party, which, while perhaps not literally a party, seems to me uh, had all the uh, elements that we're looking at here. We need to 
make a big noise. Yay! Yay! Okay. Hitting the streets like the occupiers are doing, more power to them, that's good. Support them, join them, whatever. And if you, uh, you know, I would urge you to try to vote, vote, and vote in a way that will make you feel good rather than living another four years of aching <gasps> regret. Dismal, dark, rainy, blue, ugly regret. How's that? Yes, I still do that. <laughs> they haven't cured me of that. Well, what can we do? Uh, they're taking away, uh, they really are actively, they being the upper classes and the one percenters are really actively, pretty aggressively and openly trying to take away everything we have from A to Z. They're practically raiding the underwear drawer. They are like, they're going for everything. And it's kind of an international thing. Yeah. As I believe I said earlier or later, we're in Alex Jones territory. Yeah. This is, we are close to the nightmare that Alex Jones, well, you see, the, the, the problem is Alex was saying it was that way when it wasn't really quite that way. But, to give credit where it's due, reality has kind of like moved in on Alex's territory and here we are with a government that's more or less totally broken. Uh, both president and Congress now seem to be in accord that they have the right to, you know, neutralize us. Uh, in the case of Obama, to kill us. For those who don't know, Barack Obama's foreign policy is one, Accuse someone of being a terrorist, and two, kill him. Yeah, Obama doesn't even want to waste time with uh, illegal detention. And Congress just passed a law, however, making, making detention by the army and torture routine. I thought, I thought we had Al-Qaeda on the run, but apparently not. And you don't have to be, I don't think you have to be a conspiracy guy or a paranoid to see some of these messages coming from our government are like, well, you know, we, we can like totally crack down on you. <laughs> uh, so the response of our government has been disappointing in the extreme. And uh, on, at other levels, they are actively trying to take away our vote. How's that? There's a huge effort by the Republicans to take away our vote. Yeah. Maybe they're bitter about the absence of jetpacks. And not only don't we have jetpacks, we don't have any money. We don't have any jobs. We don't have much of an ozone layer left. I'm getting out of here. Apparently some people have jetpacks. I'm guessing the one percenters have jetpacks, don't you think? They promised us jetpacks, damn it! That was another episode of The Perry Logan Show in its entirety. You are listening to P.E.R.Y. Radio, where our guest tonight is New York Times critic Bosley Crowther. 
And when I say Bosley Crowther, I mean Perry's satiric version of Bosley Crowther. Well, thank you, Perry. Way to give the whole game away. Bosley, what did you think of this transcendent Perry Logan show? We were promised jetpacks. Well, you know, Perry, speaking as a critic, I would say offhand that the Perry Logan show is the greatest show ever. The amazing thing about Perry is that each show is greater than all the others. Yay! The best thing to do is to go up on the web, where you can see Perry's shows any old time. Perry has a YouTube page. Come on up, watch some videos, have some fun. Let's just take this latest show, We Were Promised Jetpacks, which I think is very funny. Note how Perry uses jetpacks as a symbol, much as Melville uses the symbol of the white whale in Moby Dick. Perry is encapsulating the vision of America that we all live in, where the one percenters are taking it all away from the 99 percenters. You can say that again, where the one percenters are taking it all away from the 99 percenters. Did we miss that? Anyway, Barry, I especially appreciate Perry's message of hope, which says that helping Occupy Wall Street, hitting the streets in peaceful protests, as well as voting for a progressive third party will cheer us up no end, as well as dancing our way out of here. Did you say dancing our way out of here? Did somebody request this? I don't know, but here goes.